Hello everyone and welcome to QuantPy. We derived the diffusion equation but it was kind of pure diffusion. Now we consider a small kind of extension of the diffusion to include the convection or what you might know as the drift. So previously we had the Brownian particles moving about because of bombardments by the molecules of the liquid. Now we assume that there is some force acting on the system such as currents or gravity or you can assume that the medium in which the particles are suspended is flowing. So the particles will move about as in the diffusion but now they have a preferred direction as well because of the convection or the drift. To visualize the diffusion with the convection, let's consider a medieval example first. Let's say we have a stream or river and someone dropped pollutants at a location. So the water stream will carry the pollutant downstream and it will diffuse as well. This is an example of diffusion with the convection. Our next example is an industrial age. They used to like fire and smoke, right? So you can see the upward thrust is kind of convection and the spreading as it moves upward is kind of the diffusion. The extension of the diffusion equation to incorporate convection is going to be very easy. So let's quickly recap the key steps. We had a large number of Brownian particles suspended in the liquid and we were interested in their movements over a small interval along one axis, say the horizontal axis. Assume we want to find the number of particles in the small rectangle around location x an instant later. We represent the small time interval by tau and the number of particles at a given location x at time t as a function f. So the number of particles in this region an instant later can be estimated from the current distribution of particles. Essentially, you take the current number of particles across the continuum of locations where we use the variable name delta to traverse the entire real line. So delta up 0 represents x, x plus delta represents the points to the right hand side of x and x minus delta represents the points to the left of x. As the particles at each location are moving randomly, we can represent the probability of a particle undergoing a displacement of delta by phi of delta. In the previous video, we assumed the probability is symmetric, so we were just concerned about the size of the displacements. Now we need to be careful about the sign because the probability of plus and minus delta are not equal anymore because of the convection. So a particle will move from x plus delta to x if it experiences a displacement of minus delta, the probability of which we can write as follows. And similarly, a particle will move from x minus delta to x if it experiences a displacement of delta, the probability of which we can write as phi of delta. So again, we can estimate the number of particles at location x an instant later as the number of particles at various distances from x times the probability of a particle experiencing displacement equal to that distance. But the sign of the displacement now matters because phi of delta, as we mentioned before, is no longer the same as the phi of minus delta due to the drift. So essentially, we are integrating over delta ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity. F of x plus delta represents the particles that are delta away, so they need to experience displacement of minus delta to arrive at x. Next, the familiar steps. We get rid of dx on both sides. Then expand the left hand side to first order and t and the right hand side to second order and x. Now we substitute these expansions into the expression, then apply the integral to the individual terms. The values of f and its derivatives were evaluated at x, so they don't depend on delta and that's why we can take them out of the integral. 
Now as before the total probability is equal to 1 so the first integral is equal to 1 but the probabilities of positive and negative shifts are not equal anymore because of the drift and hence the second integral is no longer 0 so we get an extra term. Now the f on both sides cancel and we get and we can shift tau to the right hand side. Now this minus delta is a bit annoying so let's get rid of it by substituting minus delta for delta essentially flipping the signs of delta everywhere. So the first integral becomes where we have to change the integration limits as well because when delta equals infinity that means minus delta equals minus infinity and vice versa. Similarly we can write the second integral as follows and we substitute these back into the expression to get. Now we can invert the integration limits which means we have to change the signs so we get. Now we recognize the diffusion coefficient and we can call the average displacement per unit time as the drift and we get the diffusion convection equation. Now let's see how we can interpret this in terms of the number of particles. We write finite difference approximations of the derivatives as before where we use the forward difference on the left hand side and the central difference on the right hand side and we can rearrange the terms on the right hand side to get. Now let's reproduce the diagram and the functions that represents the number of particles at different locations at a given time. So we are interested in what's happening to the number of particles around x. So the left hand side represents the change in the number of particles at location x per unit of time. And the first term on the right hand side is again telling us that if the average number of particles around the point x is higher than the number of particles at location x, then we shall see the number of particles at x increasing with time. So the particles diffuse from higher concentration to low concentration. And the additional second term means that if the drift is positive, then the location x will be gaining the particles from the left hand side and losing the particles to the right hand side, both proportionally to the drift or convection term. So we have derived the diffusion convection equation and we have seen a simple interpretation as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next.